zona, ma più dove c'è su. Professor 
pavilion in waiting here, Salami. Other principal officers of our great university, the inaugural lecturer, family of the lecturer, the provosts, deans and directors, professors and maritime, distinguished scholars here present, your excellencies, top government functionaries, your royal highnesses, my lords, spiritual, rector, student, staff, and students, invited guests, gentlemen of the press, distinguished and ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed my privilege to welcome you to another auspicious meeting of town and gown on this 295th in the inaugural lecture series of the University. Mr. Rebola Abola to introduce the Vice Chancellor the Vice Chancellor of the session. Mr. Rebola Abola. Vice Chancellor. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, kindly allow me to abide by the protocol as already established by the PR of Dr. Benedictor and Aviri. On this very unique occasion, a very historic one for that matter, when we have the dean of the faculty presiding over a doctoral lecture as a lecturer, not as the chairman of the occasion, it is a very unique. So he's a professor of medicine by my own record. I think we should give him a round of applause. And of course, the, our own dear leader in this community who has made everything so possible, making everything to flow, both within and outside. And I can testify to that. Two weeks ago, the registrars of all Nigerian universities were here. And even up to now, on the platform of registrars of Nigerian universities, encomiums have continued to be poured for this great woman of our own time. Uh, when history is passing by our side, you may not know. It's only after some time you do not discover that. So you were part of that history, and I think uh, God has blessed all of us be part of a history witnessing the second female vice chancellor of this university. So it is therefore my singular honor and privilege, it's a great privilege for me to stand before this very distinguished audience to present to us the number one vice chancellor in the whole of Nigeria University system.
want to go to the area of her tradition. She has affected tradition. I know she speaks Bini very well. Of course, she's of Bini as descent. And of course, she speaks Hausa very fluently too. When you are there, you think that she's an Hausa woman. And of course, she has a resemblance uh, because, because of the beauty. You know, she belongs to all these Fulani, Mulatos, and all the rest of them. The single ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to our Miss Today, the number one citizen of this campus, Professor Lillian. Somebody is doing something good. It's better for you to continue to tell the person so that the person will continue to do it well. So I think uh, uh, I want to appreciate you for the grand applause you gave it to the vice Of course, when you are very strong and very dynamic persons, it means some other very great persons are also in that company too. Because iron sharpens iron. And then excellence attracts as excellence. We have very distinguished deputy vice chancellors working with the vice chancellor here. And first on that list is Professor Ray Ozolo, the deputy vice chancellor. <laughs> the deputy vice chancellor, Ekawa Campus, Professor Uliami Noaide, is also Master of this university, Chancellor of the Exchequer, as we refer to him, Dr. Victor Imagwe. <laughs> the man who was standing on this podium last week and he was uh, telling us so much about information and all the rest of them, is here today, eminently in his own position. The university librarian, who is the custodian of our books and publications, Professor Luke Obasu. <laughs> One of the pride of this university is its College of Medical Sciences. Since the 70s, we have heard of Professor Bini, medical, medical. This is the period of admission, I'm sure the pressure is on every one of us. Even those who are working in my office, everybody, messy, messy, the pressure keeps on coming. And the person is to retain you over that reputable college, Professor Wissis, and the Provost of that college. Professor of Economics, Professor A.C. Godaro, Dean Student Affairs. Well, today, the position of post dean, uh, because it's coming from dentistry, of course, that particular seat must not be vacant. And uh, we have somebody uh, holding forth. Because the actual thing is uh, on the another side of the divide. So today we have the man who has given directive even to the team today because he didn't see the team uh, early enough at this uh, uh, grant. So the professor O. N. Obuekwe is the most dean. <laughs> We have with us representing Faculty of Art, Professor H. O. Okolocha. <laughs> the Dean of the Faculty of Education and the, of course the Faculty of uh, their Vice Chancellor, Professor Kingsley Omoro <laughs> The Dean of Mercy, Professor W. Osarogiago. The Dean Faculty of Engineering is receiving so many accreditation teams, even up to this moment. Professor E. A. Okunjo. <laughs> the Dean Faculty of Environmental Sciences is represented today by Dr. Jeff Mwodo. <laughs> Stanley
candidate for the Dean Faculty of Law, Dr. S. O. Daoundou. We have with us today the Dean that is sitting very close to the host today because he has to provide food. Food security is very important. The Dean Faculty of Agriculture, Professor Bongo. We have with us today also another of the Uruwe uh, dynasty. This time around, the Dean Faculty of Life Sciences, Professor A.J. Uruwe. As Dean Faculty of Management Sciences is represented here today by Professor E. Erabi. The Dean School of Basic Medical Sciences, Professor F. O. Agure. <laughs> the Dean Faculty of Pharmacy, Professor A. Opara. <laughs> Representing the Dean Faculty of Physical Sciences, Professor E. O. Ayumi. The Dean Faculty of Social Sciences is represented here today, ably, by Dr. I. M. Agendo. <laughs> and the Director of Distance Learning Program, Professor O. Agovo. Agovo. <laughs> then, Professor Hazard Oehena is the Director of Center for Educational Technology. <laughs> the Director of Telephone Center, Aquaculture and uh, Food Security or thereabouts is a telephone uh, projected center, Professor Ishoma Abu. <laughs> the US is driving very hard on the sustainable development goal SDG, the director of that center, Professor Ushiro Igutu. Have the director of Jupiter program of this university, Professor Tito I. 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 <laughs> the director of Child Health, Professor Mrs. Sado. <laughs> the director of Exchange and Linkages of this university, Professor E. F. Inatu. The director of IPAE's National Institute of uh, Public Administration in Ekewa Campus, Dr. Iko Ogato. <laughs> and Dr. Mrs. O. N. Ayer is that the director of Student Guidance Counseling Unit of this university. <laughs> the Deputy Registrar Selling Water School Led Devices Loss Entourage as we enter the hall, Mrs. C. I. Erigato. <laughs> this evening, ladies and gentlemen, like I mentioned earlier, it's a very unique day, and I, it is my singular honor to one of the vice chancellor to present our to us by Shell. Isn't that beautiful? I see my brother there, Darlington Obaseki. How are you today? Each of my elders, the professors here, Professor Yahweh, Professor Elafona, I don't know, you know, some of them dyed their hair, so I don't really know. <laughs> but I greet all my elders, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 295th in the inaugural lecture series of the University of Benin. 
Today's lecture is the 68th to be delivered in my tenure as a vice chancellor. And the fifth from the School of Dentistry. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce our lecturer for today. He is Professor Osawe Felix. Mrs. Grace Amorigi of Ugumoso Ugoneki in Omonde local government area of Edo State. He attended Abadu Primary School in Bini City, where he obtained his first school living certificate in 1982. He thereafter attended Edo College, Bini City, where he obtained his West African School Certificate in 1987. He was admitted into the School of Dentistry, University of Benin in 1989 and graduated with a Bachelor of Dental Surgery degree in 1997. He did his housemanship at the University of Benin Teaching Hospital in 1997, after which he did his mandatory one-year National Youth Service at the General Hospital, Bori River State, in 1998. Professor Marake obtained his Master's of Science degree in Anatomy from the University of Benin in 2005 and a professional fellowship of West African College of Surgeon in Oral Pathology in 2006. He was first employed as a dental officer in the Oral Diagnosis and Radiology Department of the University of Benin Teaching Hospital in 1999 and later as an honorary consultant in 2007. He joined the uh, services of the University of Benin as lecturer one in the then Department of Oral Surgery and Pathology in 2006 and rose through the ranks to the position of a full professor in 2018. <laughs> and administrative positions within and outside the university. Uh, I think uh, we'll be looking at another inaugural if I list all. But among them is the dean of uh, the School of Dentistry, which of course he rose to in 2021 till date, head of the Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Pathology and Medicine, 2018-21, Vice Chancellor's Rep in the Business Subcommittee of Senate, Member of Chemetry Management Committee, the School of Dental Representative to the University Admission Board, like I said, and others and others. Professor Amorege belongs to several professional associations, such as Nigeria Medical Association, Nigeria Dental Association, Medical and Dental Consultant Associations of Nigeria, Nigerian Association of Medical and Dental Academics, Nigerian Association of Oral, Maxillofacial Pathology and Medicine, Multidisciplinary Team for Cancer Care, Christian Community on Campus, and University Religious Committee. He has served as external examiner to many Nigerian universities with over 73 publications, both in local and national <laughs> He has 
has attended over 21 local and international conferences and has supervised nine theses for the Fellowship of the West African Content of Surgeons. <laughs> Professor Holiday loves playing football, I bet with the CFT obviously, and family. He is an involved Christian who has served as a deacon in the Church of God Mission International for He has recently been ordained as an elder in the same church. He's happy now to Mrs. Francisca Mokariki and the union is blessed with three beautiful and wonderful children. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to invite Professor Osawi Felix Sabani. Giving me to deliver this 290 feet inaugural lecture at the University of Benin. I will align myself with the protocol already established by the PR of the University. My inaugural lecture will be presented using this following outline. I want to start by dedicating this lecture to Almighty God for preserving my life. But nine years ago, it was almost over. I was shocked. I had multiple surgery, but the Lord spared my life. Amen. I want to appreciate my father, my late father, dear Amoriki, who encouraged me to pursue a career in the medical field, and my mother who stood by me all the way until I realized that dream. I want to appreciate my dear wife, Mrs. Francisca Moriti, and my children and siblings for their unwavering support for me to achieve this career goal. Madam Vice Chancellor, I want to specially thank you for the privilege to present this inaugural lecture. 250 inaugural lecture at the University of Benin titled The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly Face and Mad Diseases. This is the fifth inaugural lecture from the School of Dentistry and the first in the Department of Oral Mastery and Pathology. This lecture is about the what we have done in collaboration with my mentor, Professor Emi Ujo, is present here. <laughs> Back in 2006, he was preparing for his inaugural lecture, which would have been the first inaugural lecture in the School of Dentistry. But he had a cerebral accident in September 2006, and that was the end. He didn't do that inaugural lecture again. But I'm glad. I have the privilege to talk about the things we did that we did not talk about. Thank you very much. This lecture is also about the work done in collaboration with my mentor, spiritual and academic, Professor Uwa Tata, and my teachers, Professor Bukoya and Professor Saeed. There are other many researchers I work with, I will acknowledge your work in this lecture. I started as a data officer in order that we started in 1999, when I developed interest in diagnosing face and mouth diseases. My job was to assess patients that come to clinic, take a good history from them, examine them, if they are x-rays, look at it, and then decide what is their problem 
if it needs urgent care, I'll do it or refer to specialist. But while doing that, I took interest in knowing more about diagnostic scheme. How can we make accurate diagnosis and predict the outcome of treatment of diseases in the face of mouth region? In view of that, with the encouragement of our mentor, I went to do a fellowship training in West African College of Surgeons, and in 2006, I obtained a fellowship as a rural administrator pathologist. The training itself equipped me with the diagnostic skill to be able to make accurate diagnosis using advanced diagnostic techniques, particularly the use of microscopic examination of stained tissues of diseases and cells, and then being able to predict what disease is this and what can be done for this patient. I also did the training in anatomy. I obtained the master's in anatomy in 2005 where I acquired knowledge that would help me know more about head and neck structure that was useful for my work, the normal tissues. My journey as an academic started in 2006 in School of Dentistry and I rose to the rank, to the rank of professor in 2018. This lecture is to let us know the limitations of relying only on what we see in the clinic to be able to diagnose this amount of diseases. And then to also tell us some of the only signs that any of us can just sense to know that there is a problem in the face and mouth. But because of the complexity of explaining the names of these diseases, I'll simply put it that you can call them good diseases, bad diseases, or ugly diseases. But actually in the field of medicine, there are special categories for prognostication to know what disease is this. It can be guarded, can be poor, fair, good or excellent. In the course of this lecture, I'll talk about my contributions as an oral artificial pathologist in advocating for patient treatment and contributing to protocols for treatment of these face and mouth diseases. I will also talk about community services vendor and in the recommendations, I expect that this lecture will help patients to quickly seek treatment and dentists to collaborate with oral artificial pathologists for a better care for our patients. As a way of introduction, Madam Vice Chancellor, my esteemed guests, dentistry is a unique field of medical science that deals with prevention and treatment of disease in the face and mouth region. Dentistry has developed to a point where there are more than 13 specialties of dentistry, with many sub specialties. So as I start there, first of all, you see me as a dentist, then you can now look at it as a, a, a masofacial pathologist. I know that the VC was saying that that word masofacial is big, so we simplify it in the course of lecture. The other masofacial pathologist essentially is looking at the study, the diagnosis, and sometimes we participate directly in the treatment of diseases in the face in the mouth and in the neck and head regions. This specialty, therefore, we look at what caused the disease, what's the effect and what the process. And then we use several tools to arrive at this. We look at the patient, we do some lab tests, and we also do some microscopic tests, including disease cells up to genetic level. And then in the process of doing this, we can use this material for research, for diagnosis, for treatment and then if I was hard, we also carry out work with autopsies to be able to find out what caused death and assist in investigating crimes. Alright? But very uniquely, the oral masturbation pathologist with extra commitment can stand as a patient advocate. It means that you are not supposed to operate a patient except the pathologist tells you what exactly is the problem of that patient and what you expect to get out of it. I'll start by explaining a few things. The face and the scalp and then the mouth. Of course, the face is in the front of the head, isn't it? But for us, it's very difficult to draw a line between the face and the scalp. The normal face starts from the hairline to the chin, and like between the ears. But I'll tell you some of us, our hairline is at the back. So where is the face? It means that, what is like mine? The, the hairline is at the back, so the face starts from there. So what is the mouth? Is this what you want to put food? But that's not what really is. Anatomically, 
The more they stand to the upper part of your truth and the referring. So when we we'll be talking about diseases, we are going to talk about the structures we see there. How do we know whether there is disease in the face of mouth region? They have warning signs. And one of the warning signs is that you could have shocking sensations from the tooth. Just when you take cold water or drink, you start feeling shocking sensations. That's a warning sign. Or you notice that there's a swelling in the face or in the mouth. Or there's a change in the color of the skin of the face, in the eye, or the mouth. Even the tooth color can change. You could also see sores in the mouth, especially those that don't heal within two weeks. Then you can see some gums that are swollen and they bleed very easily. And then those who have persistent bad breath, that is a sign that there's a problem in the mouth. The other problem signs can, that can show that there's a face and mouth disease is when there's a hole in the tooth or there's a crack in the tooth that may be painful. Or the pain can extend to the face. Then sometimes you look at the gum, the, the, the gum as we see that the tooth is loose. There's a disease somewhere. Sometimes you just want to eat, you can't chew, chew and you are feeling pain, something is wrong somewhere. And then lastly, this joint that moves the mouth, the jaw up and down, it can be fixed or painful. That's a sign of disease. The problem is you know that there is a sign of disease, but you don't know what the problem is. So you can subject it on your own, decide. Maybe what I'm feeling is good, there's no problem. Or it's bad. Or this is very terrible, ugly. You are permitted to do that, but don't stop there. We expect you to go and see the dentist. Visit the dentist, let him examine, let the dentist tell you what the problem is. But beyond what the dentist will do, at some point the clinicians might feel that what he's seeing may be beyond what the eyes can see, then they will call for the pathologist. That's where we come in. I will help to look at the accurate diagnosis and predict what the treatment will look like. I want you to know that no patient has a perception of good, bad, and ugly. The disease is what it is. You need an expert to use the medical category to tell you what actually is the problem. And oftentimes, what patient is calling the disease is not actually what the disease is after evaluation. And the Vice Chancellor, my esteemed audience, we'll be looking at a few clinical photographs to show you how these diseases in the face look like. Bear with me. I told you bad and ugly, so you might see some things you don't like. You bear with me. So we'll run through a few slides and then we'll talk about my contributions. This slide is a slide of two that is decaying and it looks ugly. Then this is happening in the child because the mother was indulging the child. The child is crying too much, you put the you bottle in the mouth to sleep with it. Or put the breast in the mouth for the child to sleep with it. The child will come up with what we call nursing bottle carries. It looks ugly, but for us as dentists, we can take care of all those things and the mouth will look good. Even some of those things will fall off and very beautiful things will come out. So what looks bad then may actually be good as far as we are concerned. This other one are those who grind their teeth or you brush any and you cut the tooth at the neck or you wear the tooth out. So I can it looks bad but we can restore the tooth and everything will look normal. So as far as we are concerned, this is a good one. But to the patient, this is a bad condition. We have some diseases that are developing inside the bone. We can't see it, so we take an X-ray. I project here tooth that have holes, but inside the bone there's a black spot. That X-ray is telling us that there's an abscess inside the bone. And, and to us, when we see this, we get worried. But so it's, it's just an abscess that if we treat this tooth, it can come out good. The next slide is talking about a gold condition that is showing red this smooth. Uh, shiny tongue, a gum with some white patch patches on the tooth. If you clean this tooth well and you even meet a dental expert that can take off your gum, it will come out excellent. So it is not what you see that is bad that is there, it's how you take care of it. But these other ones I want to talk about, they go beyond what the eyes can see. These ones are blisters, like this now, the lip has bloody blisters. This one can occur as a result of reaction to medicine. Most of those common antibiotics you take can cause erythema multiforme. Or it can be a viral infection like epicyplex infection that preserves the blisters. In this case, patients look ugly. But for us, if we use steroid therapy, patients come out it. So it's a good condition as far as we are concerned. The other one is also a viral condition with scars that is falling in face epizostal infection. In this case, patients Looks bad, but we can also treat. 
But we get a fair prognosis because you may treat the disease, and it can cause the severe pain, cause hysteric neuralgia. Um, um, uh, so we, 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 we call it the fair prognosis. This is another case of blister on the tongue, on the, on the lip. Most times you have malaria, you just saw something like a blister there, and you say malaria. It's not really malaria. The immunity drop is a viral infection. Lepis labialis. Alright? It looks bad, but if you treat, if you go away. So we call it good prognosis. This is a tongue that looks white tissue, so part clean away. The proper assessment of this patient. We will find that it's just a fungal infection that if you treat like a fungi, it will recover completely. So to us, that's good prognosis. These next ones are a little more challenging. This has a smooth shiny tongue. And we call it a trophic glossitis. We cannot, the patient sees it as bad, but for us, we just put garden prognosis because it can go anyway. It can occur most times as a result of chronic anemia. That means there's not enough iron or there's B12. But the problem is, if you do not treat on time, it can transform to become cancer. So we like to leave it as garden prognosis. I will show you what finally happened to this patient later. This one is a case of black spots on the lower lip. This could occur just because of reaction to using uh, lipstick or there's a bruise to the lip. Unfortunately, this patient did not come early. And it was not really lipstick. When we put letter, it wasn't lipstick, it was cancer of the lip. So if you don't really look ugly, it was very poor in terms of the, the cancer aspect. Unfortunately, this patient did not come back on treatment. We have a case of all the skin is looking scary, including the lip with sores on the lip. It looks bad, we call it fair prognosis, epidemiolysis bullosa. It's an immune reaction with this particular type. With steroid therapy, we expect some improvement in this patient. This other one is a gum swelling that grew over the lip, over the upper teeth. This particular swelling looks ugly, but actually, when we exercise it, come out with good problems, we're not going to go back again. So, as ugly as it looks or bad as it looks, this is a good prognosis. It's a reactive gum swelling. Rather than we are beginning to see some more challenging ones. This patient was wearing artificial teeth, denture, and developed sore on the palate. And before you know it, it became so inconvenient. But when we saw this patient, we treated this ulcer, and it came out like it was just a, a, a candidate species. Next one are swellings on the face of the cheek. The first one, this smelly one, is a big swelling that collects water inside, fluid inside. It's a cyst. When this child was operated, it came out well, but the apparent clinical picture was very bad at all. This other one is a, a swelling in the face. It's not cancer, but at the time this patient was operated the first time, it did not know that it was the aggressive type of a tumor called central general sector. You know? All we needed to do was to infuse steroid inside it and control it, the swelling. So the patient came back and we were considering a repeat surgery. These ones are terribly ugly. This patient has swelling that extends from the cheek to the neck. And when we examined it, it was actually a nerve cancer. The chances of the patient was really poor. The next one is also a terrible swelling that involved the entire upper lip and tongue in a young adult male. Look at how ugly this lesion is. This patient did not come back. But the treatment was just put hot water or soft water into it and it will shrink. Then the surgeons will repair the lip and the patient will be okay. The patient did not come back. So it looks ugly, but for all, it's a good case. These are also, see, this is about the same tumor in the child. Unfortunately, this patient was diagnosed as a nerve tumor in the first time, as solitary neurophyte tumor. But when the patient came back eight years later, we reviewed and found that it was just blood tissue that was overgrowing and producing that massive swelling. All we needed to do was just infuse all salt water. It will shrink and they will repair the face with have told that well. Alright, this one is still being reviewed. This is swelling, we didn't complete the assessment of this, so it's guarded. We only just stick a needle into it, collected tissue, and found that it looks like a normal, non cancerous swelling. But some media was suggested that it may be cancer. We advise that you have to go back and cut, and they will decide. It's still a guarded case. These patients that are presented are not looking encouraging. There is zero for them. The next few slides I want to show is to go beyond what I do normally to make a diagnosis. I work with some surgeons and clinicians and we treated some patients. So let's see the outcome for those patients. First, this is the same erythema multiforme, that blood blister in another patient. 
This patient was properly treated with steroids. This is how it came out. The swollen large blood strip got started recovering, and we expect it to completely clear if the patient continues with therapy. That's the talk I showed you for that was good and said we are not sure whether it's going to turn out to be cancer. It turned out to be chronic anemia and the tongue started falling back again with populations. There's another one we treated. This one was a small bone swelling that looked innocent. By the time we reviewed it, we found that it was cancer. But the name of this one was fair. So we advised take everything out. And then everything was taken and that's how it came out. And the patient never had a recurrence. So it's a good case to it was cancerous case. This one is a patient that was AIDS patient, HIV patient, that developed sores along the side of the tongue. This is a, a microscopic picture of squamous cell carcinoma. That is a cancer. And then when the patient was subjected to chemotherapy, that's how the tongue now looked like. Unfortunately, we are just project, we are already long this life. We cannot guarantee with this comorbidity whether this patient will survive. This is another one with a deep swelling on the side of the face. This patient was operated. That's the swelling. This swelling has that's the tumor inside the bone, inside the soft tissue that was removed. Then it finally came out good. Nine weeks later, everything was clean. Until then, the tumor did not recover. So it may have looked ugly, but it's a good prognosis. And I'm Vice Chancellor and my esteemed audience. I want to talk about my contributions in the field of Ramas, which I performed. For patients that present with perceived good conditions, you don't expect a patient that thinks his condition is good to come back and say a doctor. So these good patients, this category was not often a patient category, it was a doctor's category. Patient comes to clinic, doctor says you don't have a problem, go home. But without discover that with pathologists work with mental health experts, most of these patients have psychological disturbances. They look good, but they have underlying mental health illness. And this group of patients, starting with the first one, patients that have bad breath, delusional halitosis. Patient comes to the clinic and tells us, my mouth is smelling, I cannot sit with anybody. And in some cases, some patients have committed suicide. In our series, we established that some of them were having problems. Look, these are new men students we evaluated. Already at Bata, Akibe, Akin Bay, Akin 2006. We found that most of our patients that were males, the young adult patients, the new students that came, they could not continue well with the academics and they had social problems. This patient mouth is very clean. Yet they said it's very bad, bad breath. And they hold on to that belief. What could we do for this patient? First thing we did was to find out what caused it. We did some research. This is the chart of 68 cases we saw. 14 of them from a little bit, 12 of them were males, male, young males, adult uh, students. So we looked at the cause and found that they were oral causes. Patients that have had deposit in their mouth of bitter taste, or they have had artificial tooth or removal tooth. From there, their mental health is started. And then they start complaining that now my mouth is smelling, you smell everything, you check the mouth. They used to clean and brush more than four or five times a day. Yes, they said their mouth is not clean. With the help of mental health experts, we were able to evaluate and find that they have poor esteem, poor self esteem, they were anxious, and they were having emotional disturbances. I keep the Omoregi Tour 2007, and we also worked more on how to help this patient. We developed a three stage protocol where if a patient comes to the dentist, we can do some preliminary things before they go to the mental health expert. When we refer them, they won't go. They tell you that I'm not mad. So we develop another strategy. We will treat them to a point where we know that they are stable before they cannot go and see mental health expert. It really didn't work too well. So we develop another strategy. We now work into a multidisciplinary team where we now invite the mental health expert to our clinic. You will be seeing a psychiatrist without knowing that you are seeing a psychiatrist. <laughs> Another one is most of us, when you hear dental treatment go to the clinic, they will begin to panic, dental anxiety. We have found that most patients who go to dental clinic are afraid. But that fear, we have found that it doesn't have significant effect on patients' well-being. The real problems in the dental problem that took you there. So we expect the clinician to, you know, pacify the patient and alleviate the anxiety and take up the dental problem. Because social impact is still in the dental problem. So patient looks good, looks worried, but the real problem is the dental disturbance. This other case I want to talk about is interesting. We just decided to review people who come to the hospital plus our regular staff and discover that 
one third of the patients we looked at, participants we looked at, they drew their sleep. It means that saliva comes out of the color of the mouth and wet the pillow at night. They don't know when it happened, but the pillow will be smelly. And those patients, they don't come for treatment because they think it's normal. When we review those cases, we found that there were family history in one fifth of those cases. Unfortunately, we also discovered that some of them actually admitted that for those who were married, it was having the having marital problem. We were putting on their spouse. And the other group said they cannot sleep in the public, they know that saliva will come out. We recommended that this patient should actually come, let dentists assist them. I got to again in 2009. So we look at the social part, we look at the tooling problem. These two other people I want to talk about are pains in the facial region. Trajectory the right This is a pain that is very painful, very stabbing pain, like they are stabbing with a knife. It appears on the right side of the face, especially when somebody tries to chew. We have observed that if you do proper medical treatment and counseling, we can actually have good response. Morogi will go to 2015 and Morogi uh, at that time, College of 2013. We discovered that in a few weeks, patient response when you actually take care of your trigeminal urethra. There's another problem, the size of the face, when you open your mouth and close it, there's a joint that's responsible for that. These patients are the patients that have pain that is psychological. When you are going through a lot of emotional stress, when you have you lost a lot of when you have an exam to write, suddenly one side of your joint begins to ache you. That's TMJ pain dysfunction scene. It's a psychological problem, it's somatizing on the joint of the face. We find that if we do medical treatment and psychotherapy by counseling, patients do well. Alright, but there's a line that the psychological problem. They are anxious and they have some psychological disability. By collaborating with mental health expert, already at the 2020, we find that the patient can respond. The next group we want to start looking at are patients that are complaining of bad facial conditions. Remember the first group I talked about, our patients that come to the doctor, they don't say you are well. Yet, mental health expert told us that they are sick. This one, the patient knows that their condition is bad. They roll to the clinic. But when we look at it, most cases were not as bad as they said. I start with the first group, gingival swellings. These ones are gold swellings. And these gold swellings, we had a case of peripheral asphyxia by our genital. One was just a reaction of the gold. The other was blood, bloody tissue. It's common in pregnant women. Once they deliver it, two will disappear. But they think the worst has already happened. So if you cut it, the gold will just recover. Unfortunately, this particular group, we, our research, Morgue, Akibe, uh, uh, Akibe, 2018, we discovered that some of them are changing to the plastic region or cancer. So we requested that you should do special tests, immunochemical tests, to separate the reactions from the plastic region. I want to look at another body of complaints related to tooth disease. Patients come and say my condition is bad. You look at the amount, the real problem they have is tooth problem. Either it's at the result at, at the uh, level of pulp tissue, or it's already inside the bone. We found that in our research that most of the teeth that were removed, we decided to scoop them routinely. And found that more than half of the cases that they removed to the left something inside the bone. Either infection or a sac containing water. And after some time, the tumor will grow out from the bone. And we recommended that you should not select whether you should remove the bowels. If anything tells you that something is there, if you remove the tooth, scoop the bone for the bowels. So that's our finding in that case. So patient looks bad, but we know that the infection can be treated with good prognosis. The cyst can be treated. Unfortunately, there were also cancers in it. Actually, some patients removed tooth some time ago thinking that they removed tooth ache. They did not know that they left cancer in the bone. So in reviewing our cases, uh, Oregon Saido, uh, Saya, 2008 and 2009, Oregon Saib, Odukoya Nojo. We established that there were some cancer left in the bone by removing just tooth without proper evaluation. I won't talk more about the cystic region, we are talking about this. And it's interesting to know that some of the tooth tissue you leave inside the bone, we were able to review them and find that they are different types and classify them. We call them pyogenic granulomas. And a lot of places are referencing it as a new classification for the tooth. More again, until 2011. See, among the bad conditions, some of them are not in the tooth but they are around the soft tissues of the mouth and the face. These infections can be reactions causing ulcers. Most of them are described as recurrent after ulcer. But we also found that those cases, within three weeks, they can recover. 
There are those ones that are ulcers, they look like sore. After three weeks, they did not heal. We found that those cases are actually cancers. And you need to follow them up. Because they will come out with poor prognosis. Same on soft tissue lesions. I want to talk more about reactions to the soft tissue. You see more details there. We found that patients will begin to have reactions within the mouth. And we have to them to the growing use of herbal toothpaste. I'm not saying that you should not use herbal toothpaste. When we have research over time to see that not everybody that should use herbal toothpaste, you may react to it and you have allergic stomatitis. So in that case, if you stop using the paste, you will recover and have a good outcome. There is a case of necrotitis fasciitis, spreads as abscess from the face to the chest, all the way to the, to the chest, and they can kill. In fact, of the six cases we reviewed, half of them survived. The other half died because of shock and thrombosis. So once you see the toothache that is very quick, you have to follow it up because it can develop the abscess that can kill. I looked at the cases of bad conditions as a bad condition that collect water inside the tissue. We call them cystic lesion. I won't be able to go into the details of those ones. But there are four different types we saw. One of them was the red cases. At the tip of every tooth, there's something growing there, collecting water. If you remove it as radicular cyst, you have a good prognosis. There's another one, tooth that don't come out in the bone, and you just relax. Later we find that some of those teeth will develop a sack of water around them called the tigerous cyst. Again, if you remove them, everything will come out well. So the patient thinks they are bad, but they actually can turn out as good. Unfortunately, these two cases, our work shows that there's an increasing incidence that if you leave them, they will change to solid tumor. Okay, so we suggest that you should intervene very quickly. We, de we decided to also probe a little. These swellings that are looking as if they change to solid tumor, how do you separate them? So we do immunohistochemistry, chemistry, and we use carotene special immune test you can do to separate the tumor from the ordinary sac. And we're able to separate some of those tumors. I will go into those technicalities. Uh, uh, finally, I just want to go straight to the, the lesions that look ugly. There are some lesions that look ugly. And let me also tell you, as ophthalmologists, we found that most of those ugly lesions were cancers. They actually disfiguring tumors that destroy the face. So if a patient describes my condition is ugly, something is really wrong. That's what our study showed. It's just that you don't know whether it's cancer or not. But from our study, most of them were cancers. We found cancers that develop from salivary gland for facial space. We also saw patients that have normal swelling that were not cancer. They didn't treat it. So over the years, we have giant ossified fibroma, giant amyloblastoma. But we broke for that. We found that there was ignorance, there was poverty, and there was fear. More again, uh, a talk 2019, before that you can also have giant amyloblastoma. You can also have cancers developing as ugly lesions. I will move further to start talking about my contributions. My contributions um, as an academic in the University of Edinburgh. In the department, we have been able to train a lot of undergraduate students. But I want to also say, when my citation was read, it was nine, as of today it is not ten. Because my resident, I was in the department, I think I wonderful persons that are actually with me. Some of them are with me here today. Wonderful persons, they are consultants now in the system. I also made contributions in terms of medical outreach. Those bad brain patients that I talk about, we took special interest in them. I will tell you something. Many years ago, Professor Akwata and Professor um, um, Sorry, I, I don't know. Yeah, it was a was a Camino. We put a team together called the Oral Wellness Team. We were able to create awareness for those patients that have problems. We were able to also publish from that work. And we were also able to develop a pro protocol to help these patients that could even commit suicide. I've been a part of surgical outreach where we diagnose facial diseases and patients are assisted. I also set up a medical center and I've been reaching out to communities in Igosa, uh, both directly or working with other NGOs to assist them. Um, I want to say a few acknowledgments. I want to thank Almighty God for pres preserving my life. I want to testify here that I realize that the position God has put me is to project His kingdom. That's why He spent my life. 
I'm really grateful. For the opportunity to give this inaugural lecture, and for counting the worthy when I was elected as dean two times, I want to also let you know that other than my vice chancellor, dentistry has had its glorious days. Madam, we are grateful. I want to appreciate other vice chancellors, university, especially those. Under whom I was appointed as associate professor and professor, I want to acknowledge the uh, principal officers of the university. Those days, I would love to assist you. Thank you, sir. I want to thank the provost, uh, I want to thank the former provost of the college. Also, present is our teacher here, Professor Vincent Yahweh. Sir, we thank you. Professor Sado, we thank you, sir, for the support you have given to us, even as a school. I want to specially acknowledge our own former provost and serving team leader, Professor Kunofa. He's been wonderful. Thank you. The collaboration we have prepared on that. I acknowledge the presence of my deans and directors. Thank you, sir, for your support. Here, I want to also acknowledge the chief medical director. Professor Vasek, thank you very much. We have been known that we have been supporting for dentistry. And as I tell you, we are pushing it for, for purpose built dentistry is there for us. We want to continue to encourage you for the innovations we are seeing in the, in the teaching hospital. Thank you, sir. <laughs> we are the teachers in the School of Dentistry. Your names are all written there. I cannot list off it. I want to say a few names. All the way from abroad back to Odo then to Benin. So Joe came to come on. <laughs> Thank all my teachers, your names are included. So Dukoya would have been here, but for some challenges. I want to acknowledge him openly here. I thank Professor Saeed. There were challenges we went through during my training that they stood by me. I want to acknowledge the rest of the departments of the School of Dentistry for all the support you have been giving. Professors in dentistry. My friends and those who have supported me to meet this inaugural, I also want to acknowledge uh, my co-researchers. This is what we are talking about now. Very are known for your support in the year. Then I want to appreciate the associations that I belong to. And not much emphasis was given about the ANDT, Association of Nigerian Dental Deans. Incidentally, I am the chairman of the Deans of Dentistry in Nigeria. <laughs> as the chairman of that association. <laughs> that association is pushing seriously for oral, oral health policies to be implemented and creating better medical uh, uh, education. I also thank NMA and MDCAN, thank you for your support. And my own association, Oral Social Pathology and Medicine, which I'm also the vice president of the association, will be wonderful. <laughs> thank you. The leader bodies which I belong, especially CGM, to our Commission International, our own Archbishop, and the Dr. 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 And also present here is the Zonal Coordinator for our own church, Professor Aisye. Welcome, sir. And the uh, Pastor of the Professor Wyabu. Thank you very much, sir. I'm grateful for friends and all the support that I've received. But this time around, let me talk a little about family. I want to thank my family members here present, both in-laws and friends. And there's somebody here I must quickly acknowledge. My elder brother, please stand up, Vice Chair Moriki, is the president of the new club. We are celebrating today, my father is late, but he stands as the father. And all the members of the family, let me introduce a very special person here. Please stand up, Mumi. That's my mother, Mrs. Jason. <laughs>
thank my dear wife. Thank you. And it will turn out to be good. So it's worth the effort going to treatment. And lastly, those ugly diseases oftentimes correlate with cancers. And we advise that people should work fast so that they will not appear late and then lose their life. My recommendations are intended to encourage patients to rapidly, quickly come for treatment. Dentists to collaborate with oral malnutrition and pathologists so that we can have an accurate diagnosis and better to be able Thank you. Recognizing the conditions. 
It simplifies the description of facial and oral diseases using three subjective categories good, bad, and ugly. Compared with Of Institute Oral Health Policies. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. Thank you, Madam Vice Chancellor. When I invite the immediate family members, wife, children, Mama, please come up. The representative of the father. That's uh, Henry, your Warrior Esquire, President Billy Club. Please join wife, children. What's the budget? The budget Please come on stage to support Where's as the Vice budget? Chancellor decorates the lecturer. On that note, I'd like to budget quickly make these acknowledgements. Join me to welcome, as I give honor to whom honor is due, the sweet mother of the lecturer, Mrs. Grace.
sit and be served. Meanwhile, we shall now rise for the second stanza of the national for the union anthem and then the second stanza of the national anthem.